is the United States Steel Hour. Only steel can do so many jobs so well. And the United States Steel trademark, USS, stands for quality steel. Steel for industry. Steel for transportation. Steel for the farm. Steel for the home. Quality steel. United States steel. something upstairs? No. Uh, well, you never come to the tower. You never come to visit your father and me here. Excuse me? Uh, wouldn't you like to join your father and the others in the billiard room? I'm sure he'd be pleased if you... No. Thank you very much. Fernand, wait. <laughs> what are we to do, you and I? Usually it's a woman's privilege to be pursued. But here am I, trying to make friends with you and making absolutely no headway. <laughs> Must it be war, Fernand? Please. A truce. There, you smiled. Did I? <laughs> Fernanda, are you angry with your father for having married again? Or is it just me? Maybe it's me. <laughs> You're very important to your father's happiness. And his happiness is very important to me, so we share something. In a way, you hold both of us in your hands. Isabel? Yes, dear. I shan't like to talk about it. Excuse me. Keeping it up with my no smoking more jacket. No more alibis, Charles. No wonder I miss this. You easy show him, darling. Very well. <laughs> I hate to ask where you spent your youth, since you are so proficient at billiards. I will tell you, John. In music halls, in salons, on the boulevard, at Chantilly for the weekend, chasing beautiful women until you caught up with them. Hmm. Didn't you, darling? How did you know? Were you hidden under the children's table somewhere? I was a little girl with long ears, and I heard all the gossip. His charm comes in very handy in my business. That's why I hired him, Mary Louise. Or have you never heard of elderly female stockholders? I will require sworn statements that they're all over 70. Here is the jacket, Charles. Oh, uh, thank you, darling. Please see if, if, if Monsieur Darnall will have some armagnac. 
Monsieur? Thank you. Philippe? I'd like to, but... Uh, but what? I'm chained uh, down. Let him go, Mary Louise, just for a moment. You'll have to kiss me first. Why, certainly. Oh. You see what my life is like, monsieur? Married to her for a year and still the attack continues. A cat, do you call it? A cat? <laughs> is that what you said? Oh, no, no. A cat? <laughs> I surrender. I surrender. You see, monsieur, our Mary Louise is a child. She thinks that being grown up and married is a wonderful new game invented just for her. <laughs> and why not? Ah, uh, Fernand. Come, join us out, my boy. We need an umpire. I, I, I somehow cannot win when Philip keeps the score. Well, I'd like to very much, Father, but I have two chapters. It's my summer required reading. Oh, well, then, then go to it, my boy, by all means. Maybe someday soon you will be a doctor of philosophy. After all, there must be a first time for every family. Thank you, Father. Uh, will you excuse me? Yes, of course. This is the book I spoke about this noon. I marked the place. Thank you, Fernand. <coughs> now, don't read too late. You'll tire your eyes. I won't, Father. Good night. Good night. Good night. My son is not very sociable. I'm, I'm sorry. Oh, uh, nonsense, uh, Charles. Come on. You know, uh, he used to be so interested, and, and now, uh, suddenly... Uh, and he spends so much time by himself. I feel a bit chilly. I'll just go upstairs and get a wrap. Well, never mind. Yeah, I'll close the window. Oh, no, darling, really, it's a new one. I, I want Isabel to see it. Now, come on, Philip, let's go on with the gate. Monsieur Dana, will you keep an eye on my partner? Oh, <laughs> no. Uh, oh, let's, let's draw for, for, for who starts. All right. your bookmark told me to. And I found your letter under my pillow. Oh, and then supposing my husband had seen it. But I knew he was playing billiards with father. <laughs> this nonsense has gone on long enough. Mary, sir, Look, don't, if you... Don't interrupt me. Oh, stop calling me by that childish nickname. We're not children together anymore. At least I'm not. Nor am I. You're just a baby. I am one, one year younger than you. You're a boy. I'm a married woman. And you must stop writing me these burning declarations. Fernand, suppose someone had seen you go into the tower. Mm -hmm. Everyone knows you never visit your father's suite. The only other one there is mine. I'm Philippe. Marius. You know what I do with your letters, don't you? Well, I tear them into a hundred pieces. You don't. Oh, Marius. You promised me. No. No, I, I've kept my promise. But that's what I want you to do. You have never talked to me like this before, Marie. Take them. Well, go on, take them. I don't want them. But why now? Has anything happened? Oh, nothing has happened. And nothing is going to happen. Fernand, if my husband knew of this little absurdity, he'd, he'd be very angry with you. I'm not afraid of your husband. Well, it is absurd now, isn't it? Don't you see, Fernand? This is just another game we're playing. Mary says, don't talk to me as though I were a child. Oh. Mm, stop smiling. <laughs> <laughs> ah. Well, it is funny, isn't it? Well, we have known each other forever. Now suddenly, this summer, you decide. I have this summer. I am 19. Then suddenly. I know that I love you more than any man possibly could, even more than Philly. And there's nothing I wouldn't do for you, Mary. Nothing. What am I going to do with you? It's so sweet, but you're so intense. And then you can't be that much in love, now can you? Huh? I saw you at the races on Thursday, in very charming company. Oh, that. Yes. Well, who, who is she? Her name is Denise. Yes? And? Well, she's... Huh? She's in the company at the Madeleine. And she's, she's an actress! Uh, Bravo, Fanny! She huh? has a car of her own. She has money. 
And she likes to go to the races, but that's... Now listen, do you know what I want you to do? I want you to fall very much in love with Stop this little actress. Stop Marie. Oh, Marie's. Don't you see? It's you. It's you. When I'm not with you, not seeing you, not looking at you, I feel shut off, alone in the world. Well, you're not alone. Your father worships you. He's just married a charming woman who adores you. I never think of my father. I never think of Isabella. All I, I don't think of anyone at all except you, Maurice. I must apologize to you. I have flirted with you. I admit it. It pleased me and perhaps it excited me a little, but I had no idea you were so in earnest. It must have meant No, it, it, it meant nothing. It just meant absolutely nothing. I've never given any man a serious thought except my husband. I love Philippe. Do you understand that? I love him even more than I seem to. You must listen to me. It's because you have, have never taken me seriously. You see? You, n now you I must. So I must go Ma back to you. Nice. You've been afraid to listen to me. In a few weeks' time, you will have forgotten no, this. No, no, Marie. Please, I'll tear up the letters, but you must come back here. I must talk with you. Good night. Marie, I'll wait. I'll wait an hour, two hours. No, it's to no purpose. Maurice? Oh, Maurice. Oh, of course, how stupid. That's <laughs> it. I know when I'm beat. Not a watch all? No, thank you. Maybe Monsieur Dano uh, will be the next sacrifice. Sacrifice? <clears throat> How do you know, Charles? Perhaps we have someone here who can finally beat Philippe. Oh, I'm sorry, madame, but billiards is not my game. Oh, what is your game, Donald? What? You are more respected, eh? Thank you. <laughs> oh, it's charming, my dear. What? Your new scarf. Isn't she lovely, monsieur? Oh, monsieur Philippe is very fortunate. When I first met her, monsieur, she was 15, with freckles. That was five years ago. And then the summers come and go, according to custom, and one day I look around and behold, a woman. <laughs> well, I said to myself, well. I couldn't imagine what had come over here. Oh, you should have seen her that day. She wore something yellow. Chartreuse. I don't believe you would have noticed me if it hadn't been for that dress. A dress? A trap. <laughs> and because of that trap, I've been slaving in the office of a garden company ever since. And for what? Just to support the dressmakers of Paris. Oh, Philippe. You know I get all my things from little Lolly. Oh, your wife is a marvel, Philippe. She dresses as well as anyone I know and spends so little on it. Oh, you see? I know of at least one frock at Lyonnais. Couldn't have cost less than 800 francs. She had it copied perfectly and spent 250 for it. Yes, I know. I've just received one of little Arlene's bills. Yes, Oh, and no, no, no complaints. No, very reasonable. Oh, uh, yes? Monsieur Darnot. Yes, Monsieur. Monsieur. May I see you outside? Oh, certainly. Monsieur Lagarde, I may, sh may wish to speak with you in a minute. Oh. Excuse me. Secrets, Charles? Well, uh, <coughs> I assume that uh, you've been wondering about Monsieur Darnot. Oh, yes, I, I've been a little curious, yes. I owe an apology to both of you because your, your fellow guest this week, Monsieur Darnot, is a detective. Detective, it's all my fault. Goodness knows I'm careful with money, but twelve thousand francs. Yes, exactly. It, it, it's not only the money. There would be simply no living in this house with a thief running around loose. Oh, Charles, do you do you mean to say that this man came here to catch a thief? Yes, and he already caught up with the culprit. Who? Oh, he's going to tell me, but first he has to check up some details with Michel. Ah, the man who's been posing as his valet. Yes. Well, what happened, Charles? Well, you see, all summer I was aware that something was wrong. Every few days my Isabel ran out of money and had to cash checks. So about ten days ago I had my bookkeeper go over her account and he, he found that over and above any expenditure that she could have possibly made, 12,000 francs were not unaccounted for. 
They were just disappeared, as, as, if, as, if, as if without any trace. I, I kept the money locked in a drawer in my, in my little boudoir table. Oh, that's an antique. A, a, a child could have forced that lock with a pen knife. Well, here he is. Uh, come, Monsieur Darno. Monsieur Darno, it isn't my maid, Therese, is it? I beg your pardon? Well, um, uh, Monsieur Darno, I told them. Oh, but Monsieur Lagarde, I'm not accustomed to this. Our understanding was clear. Oh, now, come, Monsieur Darno. You said that it was all over and you knew who the but person... But, Monsieur, I ask you not to speak of this inquiry to anyone. One never knows who will be hurt in these things. Well, I owe it to my guests, who are also my very best friends. Well? You're positive you wish me to speak now? Yes, of course. Very well. What? But that is impossible. Believe me, I'm sorry. You are insane. You are making it up. Charles! He says it's, it's Fernand. I will give you the evidence. That is, if Monsieur still wishes it. Well, of course I wish it. And I intend to disprove it, every word of it. This is the background. As gentlemen of the world, you will recognize the possibilities. A boy of 19 and a pretty young actress. What pretty young actress? Her name and address will be given to you, monsieur. Well, what of it? He probably was in love with her. That doesn't prove anything. Did you know, monsieur, that your son goes to the races? Of course, with my permission, every Thursday and Sunday. Oh, good. Did you know that he bets? Well, he's probably putting up 10 francs. Last Thursday, the 27th, he bet 3,000 francs on the fourth race, a horse named Cashmere Window 22, the horse was beaten. I don't believe it. And 4,000 francs on the last race, Window 19, horse named Tobacco Pouch, also beaten. I don't believe it. Oh, but monsieur, one of my men followed your son step by step. Now, one question and a very important one. What reason would your son have to go into that part of the chateau when you and madame have your suite? In the tower, you mean? Yes, 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 yes. None. He's never been there. Uh, uh, that is not since the... Uh, what my husband means, monsieur, is that Fernand has not come up there since his father and I were married. He doesn't approve of me. Oh, my dear, that's not at all the reason. It's only that the tower associates the memory with his mother. <coughs> is it correct, monsieur, that there's only one staircase leading to the tower? Yes. Then your son has been there many, many times. And I say that he hasn't. Not once all summer. I believe there's someone in this room who can confirm my statement. Who? Madame Lagarde. I? No. <laughs> oh, please, madame, it would save time. No, I have never seen him in that part of the house, never. Very well, if you insist, I shall be forced to produce the testimony. Michel! Come yes. in here, come in. Let us hear your report for this evening. Tonight after dinner, I'm in the recess at the end of the gallery. Yes. I see Monsieur Fernand pass upstairs. I hear him enter a room. Yes. On his way down, he meets Madame Lagarde. Is that correct? <laughs> All right, Michel, go back. Monsieur Dano? Yes, Madame. I went to the tower tonight, to our rooms. Did you see? Yes, 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 yes. At 10.22, Michel saw you pass upstairs. A moment later, there was a sound of a little crash. Huh? Y yes, yes, I dropped my atomizer. You see, we neglect nothing. Oh, and there's another matter. Early this afternoon, I asked Monsieur Lagarde, as he will tell you later, for 2,000 francs. Hmm? Yes. These I marked with indelible ink. And at 7.30, while you were all down here, I went up to the tower and hid those marked bills in that famous drawer. A few minutes ago, while we were all down here, after Monsieur Fernand and both ladies came back downstairs, Michel ran to the tower and looked again. He found the 2,000 francs gone. It was then, I told Monsieur, that I thought the investigation was nearly finished. My son? I won't believe it. I uh, won't believe it. Uh, you're all aware of the unfortunate fact of his character? There's nothing unfortunate about his character. He's, he's, he's shy, he's poetic, and he's introspective. Since when is that unfortunate in a Frenchman at 19? Charles, where are you going? To Fernand Blue. Oh, no, no, Charles, wait. Uh, he's not in his room. I, I think he's down at the pavilion. Well, I'm going to find him. And you will see that he's going to tear this story apart. Fernand is an honorable boy. Fernand is a decent boy. Isabel, is that possible that Fernand has grown away from me so far that, that this could happen? There must be some explanation. 
But how can I ask him for it? How will I get the words out of my mouth? It's, it's, once I've accused him, no matter how this Charles, comes out, Charles, it's, it's, please it's, let me help you. Let me go and find him. Well, Fernand and I have known each other since we were children. I don't know what to say to him so he won't be hurt. He'll never even guess that he's under suspicion. Now, please, let me find the way. I only wish you could. I'll bring him back here. Come on. Come on. This is the United States Steel Hour. In just a moment, Act Two of The Thief. But first, here speaking for United States Steel is George Hicks. America is in the midst of a record construction boom. Big buildings, small homes, and sprawling factories all are part of a dramatic story of industrial progress making for better living conditions. Tonight I'd like to take you to Chicago and show you how they're building a modern skyscraper and how United States Steel's American Bridge Division solved its special engineering problem. And here it is, the 41-story Mid-America Home Office of the Prudential Insurance Company. It towers 601 feet above the shores of Lake Michigan, Chicago's tallest building, and American Bridge hand-tailored it. You are seeing some of its 150 men on this job who are putting in place 31,000 tons of steel. Raising and riveting gangs, Derrick, Craneman, joiners, and many others, all working closely together. Beams and columns for each day's work arrive on flat cars as needed, are hoisted into place, welded, and riveted to make this one of the world's strongest, finest structures. It had to be erected over the tracks of the busy Illinois Central Railroad, another test of skill. Yet commuter service rolls day and night without interruption. The Prudential Building will be the second tallest office building outside of New York City. The structure rests on 253 massive steel caissons sunk to the equivalent of 11 stories down to bedrock by the foundation contractor. This is how a challenge was met by the American Bridge Division of U.S. Steel. And it has met others the Empire State Building, the United Nations Building, and the new Sunshine Skyway over Tampa Bay, to name a few. Another example of how the combined teamwork of United States Steel contributes materially to the well-being of a community and leaves it, in some way, a better place in which to live. Find him, Charles. He's not in the garden at all. Are you sure? Oh, yes. Yes, I looked everywhere. I called and called. He must have gone to his room. Uh, Charles, nothing has been proved yet. As far as I'm concerned, I believe Fernand implicitly, no matter what he says. And I, too. Fernand is not a liar. Father? Uh, I just came in to say good night. Yes, uh, Fernand, come. There is something very important. Yes. Uh, and you must tell me. Yes, Father. Now, you see, I am, I am forced to ask this. Have yes. Impossible. No, Fernand. Good night. Good night. No. Oh, wait, young man. Monsieur Lagarde, I would warn you that if you drop this matter now, you'll have to live with uncertainty the rest of your life. Now is the time, and if you cannot, Please let me. Very well. Monsieur Fernand, perhaps I should tell you why I'm here. I'm a detective. There's been a robbery at the chateau. A robbery? Yes, quite a bit of money. I thought perhaps you could help us. Uh, 
Do you think perhaps uh, the butler? Louis? No, Louis would not steal. Oh, thank you. <clears throat> now about your relationship with this young actress, Mademoiselle Denise, would you like to tell us something about that? No. You would not? No. Mm-hmm. But uh, you cannot deny that you lost a great deal of money at the races last week. <coughs> you deny that? Oh, very well. What were you doing up at the tower this evening? The tower? In the suite of your father and stepmother, you were seen going up there to quarter past nine. I was not there. You have been there many times recently. Look at me. Especially in your stepmother's boudoir. I can't remember, sir. I, I, I don't... No, never. <laughs> your allowance is small. You're friendly with an actress. You lose great sums of money at the racetrack. You were seen in the tower. It was you that took the money out of the drawer. No. It's useless to deny it. Your whole manner condemns you. Come, young man. Tell us the truth. No. Sir, none. There must be some mistake, Father. But, boy, but don't you see that the very tone of your voice is a... Well, a, show some, some sense of, 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 of outrage, at least. Look at your father. See what it's doing to him. Yes, I stole the money. You forced the drawer with the letter opener. Where did you hide the 2,000 you took out? Here, in this book. Yes, these are my marks. Charles? Charles, I... I can't tell you how. Come, dear. Now, young man, exactly how much money did you take? 12,400 francs. Mm-hmm. And the dates, when did you begin? Uh, beginning of the summer. That boy, that incredible idiot! That's what you must remember, darling. Fernand is just a boy. What idiotic things did you do at his age? Huh? I'm not thinking of Fernand, I'm thinking of Charles. Suddenly he looked like an old man. You're exaggerating, dear. Charles will forgive him. In three months' time, no, there won't be any... there's something more to it. This isn't just one crime, but a whole series of crimes. All well calculated, well planned. That's why Charles... Philippe! Yes, dear. Take me in your arms. Oh, darling. Kiss me. Nicely, please. You know, in a curious sort of way, I'm rather fond of you. Don't show it. I show it all the time. Even in front of detectives. What are you locking up in the drawer? You know very well. Oh, don't tell me you still carry my picture. Well, all the time, wherever I go. <laughs> Unhook me, please. With pleasure. This is a very pretty dress. Do you like it? Mm. Who designed it? Leonet. Aline copied it. Oh, how I hate to hear you talk about women's scenes. <laughs> Why, my pet? Because <laughs> it reminds me of the women you knew before you married me. <laughs> That's mm, why. Jealous? Oh, no, but why couldn't you have taken long walks and cold showers? <laughs> oh, no. Oh, darling. Yes, dear? How did he say Fernand forced that drawer? I don't remember. What shall I wear to town tomorrow? Lemon yellow, do you think? Huh? No, I know it is cinnamon. It's perfect for shopping, and you've always... 
asking me? What are you doing? Oh, I was just trying it. This commode's very like Isabel. Let it alone, dear. No, I just want to see if... I don't want you oh, wait a minute. I'm Charlie. almost getting it. Well, stop. Don't be so uh, foolish. There. You see what splendid locks they have in this house. All right. Now, are you satisfied? Oh, what interesting little bits of fur. Darling, what don't. Thing? You're messing oh, up all my... The case with my sacred photo. Don't touch that, please. I forbid you Oh, to. you do. Madame, I think you're concealing the photo of your lover in this case, <laughs> and I intend to find out who it is, and I shall challenge him to a duel at no. dawn. Oh, what an ugly-looking character. Well, you're not a bit funny, darling. Give it to me. Why is it so thick? What have you got tucked in behind the picture? Nothing. Oh, love letters, no doubt. So well, we'll soon find out. It's nothing. It's just some money. Well, I told you, didn't I? Between two thousand... Twenty-three hundred francs. It's what I've saved by economizing and by being careful. You saved that much money? But only yesterday you said you were running short. Aren't you satisfied with the way I manage my affairs? Am I extravagant? Am I foolish? No, but... Well, it's just that I have my own way of managing her, so... Now, give it to me, darling. Now, wait a minute. Oh, why are you making such a fuss? I have a headache. All that I said, wait a minute. Me. Isn't that perfectly clear? Where did you get this money? Oh, my poor darling, I told you. Now stop it, no lies, no deceit. You didn't save 2,300 francs. You couldn't have, not on our income. Where did you get the money from to buy that frilly stuff, all that Brussels lace, those hats and coats and dresses by the trunkful? I told you, I economized. You accused me of living a different sort of life before I married you, well I did. I should have known the cost of a wardrobe like yours. But you, my little innocent, had me up on a cloud somewhere. Every time I'd look at you, I'd stop thinking. Well, I'm back to Earth now. And I want an answer. Someone's here. Come in. Uh, I'm sorry, my friend, for the intrusion. I just just came to apologize for the event of this evening. Darno is driving back to Paris and Fernand... Has Did you uh, speak to him? Uh, Did he say anything else? Just yes. Yes, he bet on the races. Yes, he was involved with that girl in Paris. Yes, he needed the money. Yes, he took it from that drawer. Just, yes. Oh. You were mixed up in this, weren't you? Answer me. Fernand didn't steal that money for himself, did he? You were in it too. Well, answer well, me. But Fernand didn't steal. Then why did he say... He said he did it to save me. I stole the money. I did it. Because I had to have beautiful things to make myself attractive to you. Oh, Philippe, help me. Help you. Believe me. I stole the money, but I did it because I loved you. Now listen to me. Ever since the, oh, the miracle happened and you fell in love with me, I've had only one thought in my mind. I must not lose him. No matter what I do, I must not lose him. Words. I've always been afraid... I don't want to talk. Well, then listen to me, just listen. It started with that first beautiful dress, the chartreuse. It was a worth original and stunning, and I wouldn't let my mother rest until she bought it for me. I wore it to this chateau to a big weekend party. And you saw me coming down the stairs. And you stopped. And you stared. And you came over to me and you whispered, Maurice... I've discovered something. I've been waiting for you to grow up. And then there was another time just after we were married. My aunt sent me a blue poiré for my birthday. I wore it to a dinner party at the Bernays and you sat across the table from me. And you smiled. You smiled just for me. And I was so proud. And I was so happy. And when we got home that night, you took me in your arms and you said, Marie, your husband adores you. And 
from that night on, I wouldn't wear anything that didn't come from the very best dressmakers. He wouldn't understand that a woman would. You thought my love depended upon the clothes you wore? Yes. I didn't know, and I'm, I'm still not sure. When, when I was a little girl, I saw you with so many lovely women. Well, I'm not beautiful. Well, so that's why I found Arlene. At first, I had a copy of Originals of Worth and Fatou, but nothing ever turned out right, and I was miserable. And so, she introduced me to her sideline. Her what? She works with Madame Breton, the lingerie woman, as a sort of money lender. They, they pay your bills at the big dressmakers, and they send you other more reasonable ones to show your husband. What? Well, what happens about the money you owe them? Well, you, you pay interest, of course. And then they began to demand payment on the principal. And they torment you. And they threaten to call your lawyers. And they pick up the telephone to call your husband. And so one day... Why do you stop? One day, I was in this room. I just had a terrible conversation with Arlene. A few minutes later, I walked into Isabel's boudoir. I saw her throw several thousand francs into a table drawer. She left. I stared at the drawer. And something happened. I walked over to it. I tried to open it. It wouldn't open. But there was a paper knife lying there. And I picked it up. But why didn't you come to me and tell me? I was ashamed because I was frightened. Frightened? But you must see. You must understand. I do, I suppose. Oh. I know I've heard everyone. I've heard you and, and Charles. Oh, and Fernand and Isabel. Yes, Fernand. Why, why did he say he would do that for you? Do what? Why did he say he would steal the money? Because I asked him to. You asked him to? When? Tonight, in the garden, when I would have to talk to him. But you came back and said he wasn't there. You couldn't find him. <laughs> I lied. You fixed it all up between you. It was all calculated. How long has this, this been going on? Why were you so sure that, that he would do it for you? I had no one else to turn to. But why? Because he's in love with me. Fernand? It's cat love, schoolboy love. Well, maybe I encouraged him. It's very curious. At your request, this boy, who is pride personified, publicly admits to a crime he doesn't commit. Fernand is capable of very deep feeling. Deep feeling. I thought you just said it was just cat love. You're, you're mixing me up. How long has this been... this, this calf love with such deep feeling been going on? Well, it's summer since we've been here. Well, naturally, I knew it couldn't mean anything. Oh, I saw naturally. I tell you. You have only to read his letters to know that there was nothing between so us. Oh, Just nothing. You carried on a correspondence with him, too. Where... where are the letters? What? The letters. Where are they? I haven't got them. I see. I gave them back to Fernand only tonight. It only is tonight. Odd, isn't it? Have you quite done making a fool of me? What are you, what are you saying? I know why a boy of 19 sacrifices himself. I was 19 once. No, stop it! I've stole the money. You can do anything you want to about that. You can make it public. You can turn it over to the police. But I did it because I love you. Love! All you're capable of is indulging no, yourself. Please. You were never in love. Oh, well, listen you don't listen. have to. I've nothing more to say. I'll handle this in my own way. <laughs> Good night. <laughs> This is the United States Steel Hour.
in just a moment, act three of The Thief. But now, let's join Mary Kay and Johnny. Got a new watch. It's made of stainless steel. You know, stainless steel is amazing. Why, it's almost everywhere these days. And you will find that the same high-quality stainless steel that's in this watch is in, well, it's in this combination door, for instance. Or, uh, or... Johnny, or my stainless steel sink. Come to think of it, you're absolutely right, Mary Kay. No matter how much of a beating you give anything made of stainless steel, it'll always keep its shiny new look. Now, take my wristwatch, for example. But the best example of all is my stainless steel sink. Just think for a minute of all the things you do right here at your kitchen sink. You stack pots and pans, you scour utensils, you chop vegetables, dozens of things. But you don't have to worry about scuffs or scratches. They won't spoil the beauty of your stainless steel sink. Well, you can even leave a, a boiling hot kettle on it and never worry about blistering or scorching anything. Thank you, Mary Kay. Now, to get back to stainless steel watches. <clears throat> uh, sh I hadn't quite finished yet. Oops, sorry. Also, stainless steel sinks are sanitary because they're so easy to keep clean. Look, you can see the reason why. There's not a single crevice, not a single seam, never a scratch for food particles or germs to collect in. That's why stainless sinks are preferred in hospitals and the finest restaurants. In fact, every place that really has to be clean. Now, to get back to stainless steel watches, they make them in so many different styles today. Well, stainless sinks do, too. And they're all so beautiful. You can get a single bowl sink or a double bowl model like this one. But no matter what model suits you, whether you're building a new home or remodeling your kitchen, be sure to give yourself all of the advantages of stainless. The place to get it is from your local plumbing dealer or a kitchen supply store. Mary Kay. Oh, Johnny, what did you want to tell us about your watch? Well, there isn't time now. It's time to say only one thing. Only what? Only steel can do so many jobs so well. in my own way. I want the truth, not just a little bit of it, but all of it. Good morning, Charles. Philippe, you must talk sense to Charles. You must tell him to stop. Stop him from what? I've made up my mind. I'm going to send Fernand away out of the country to Brazil. It's just useless cruelty. You will be miserable without the boy. And what possible good can it do Fernand? Just when he needs his father most. You're sending him to the plantations? For two years, till he comes of age. The first petticoat in his life closed him. I'm going to get him out of Paris to a safe and healthy place. Nonsense. He needs you now. Can't you see? Charles. What? I'm... Father. Good morning. Good morning, Fernand. You sent for me? Yes, my son. Come. Come, uh, sit down. Hmm? Don't be afraid of me. You will not hear recriminations from me. What's done is done. What I'm concerned is the future, your future. And I have made a plan. From today on, you will be a member of the firm, a businessman with salary, a salary that will, you will earn by your own efforts so you can repay the money you took. Is that fair? Yes, of course. And I think that you had better begin your apprenticeship away from Paris and our plantations in Brazil. Are you sending me away? Yes. What, uh, what are you turning me out? Is that what you mean? You are my son. How can I turn you out? What I do, I do for you. How long will I be in Brazil? Two years. Two years. Father, if I, if I swear that in the Fernand, future, Fernand, please I don't make it more difficult for me. Our Paris office will handle your transportation from Bordeaux. Two years. Father, I've never been away from you. Come back to me, a fine man. 
Now, say goodbye to Isabel and to your friends. Goodbye, Isabel. God bless you, my dear. Goodbye, Sally. Goodbye, Marie Louise. What is it? Stop him! Stop him! But my dear, now what? Stop. What? What? What happened? I am the thief. I am the one who took the money. You what? I took the money. What is she saying? The truth. I found out last night. <laughs> but why? For me, I, I can't explain. It's beyond apology. Go <laughs> after him, Charles. Go after him. Mary. My dear. Isabel, if you don't mind, I want to speak to my wife alone. No, Philippe. Go on upstairs, my dear, and lie down. I'll be up in a moment. Go on now. Philippe, you will remain here. You will leave her to me. In one hour, you may come up and see her, but not before. The masculine ego has done enough damage in this house. You... My husband, that detective, all so sure you were right. What are you thinking? How well my plan worked. Your plan? Last night you tried to hide your guilt. You begged and you pleaded and you clung to me. But this morning, at the first sign your young friend was leaving, you burst out and accused yourself at the top of your voice. Well, I wanted to see the truth and I saw it. I'll tell you what I saw. I saw that boy standing there with his face white. Charles, oh, I couldn't keep quiet. I couldn't. Well, it's all over anyway. I'll arrange to repay Charles somehow. As for you and me, well, we're leaving here. You can start packing our things. And then? We leave? Last night you were able to read my eyes. And you forced the truth out of me. Can't you see the truth now? I saw the truth an hour ago. If you won't listen to me, will you at least listen to Fernand? Fernand. Unless I can convince you, there'll always be doubt between us. Do you know that? Doubt and suspicion for the rest of our days. Now, I beg you, please let me call him. Do what you like. Fernand, would you come in a moment, please? He's in Isabel's room. Do you want me to talk to him? I'll talk to him. Did you send for me? Yes. We both want to see you. If there's anything I'd, I can do, I'd be glad to do it for her. Anything she asks, I'll do. I can understand that. Fernand. Philippe is going to ask you some questions about us, and I want you to answer them truthfully. Because everything I want depends on it. My marriage, and my whole future. Do you want the truth? Yes. <coughs> about you and me? Yes. Well, I don't know, I don't know what to say that he'll believe if the letters. Do you have them? I didn't tear them up. Please read them. I'm not ashamed. It says I love your wife, but I want her to come away with me. And what does she answer? She didn't answer. She never answered any of my letters. Oh, no, because there was no answer to give. I will not go away with you, Fernand, now or ever, no matter what Philippe decides to do with me. But I will go away with you for two years or for the rest of our lives.
We men make one mistake. We, we make the women we love think that pleasing us is their only reason for being. It's our fault. We have no excuse. So in return, we, we must believe in them. I'll leave you to say goodbye. Fernand, you've been a hero and a young imp. You're going away from me. Oh, yes. Oh, yes, yes, if he wants me to. Oh, Fernando, I'll never forget what you did for me, never. Wherever I go, and as long as I live. She's going away from me. It will be like a second honeymoon, I... I trust you have a very good time. Fernando, don't be angry with me. But you're going away from me forever. I'm afraid for you. You mustn't do anything foolish. Now, do you promise me? Do you know what my love for you is like? Do you know now? I, do you? Then don't be afraid. Because I can, I'll be all right, I promise you. Goodbye. You have just seen The Thief on the United States Steel Hour. And here, once again, for United States Steel, are Mary Kay and Johnny. I'll bet you think that preparing a beautiful feast like this takes hours and hours, or else more servants than Henry VIII had. Well, Mary Kay did the whole thing in a matter of minutes, and she did it all by herself, too. Well, it's really easy because of today's tremendous variety of wonderful food in cans. Doesn't it all look delicious? Salads, meats, casserole, everything from soup to nuts. It was all prepared in a jiffy, and it was prepared from canned foods. Let me show you how I did it. There is no more appetizing way to start a meal than with tempting cream of mushroom soup. Perfectly seasoned, just as it comes from the can. I've, uh, I've had my eye on this big platter of cold cuts. Uh, 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 uh. There's tender, juicy ham, tongue, and corned beef, all cooked to perfection. I just take them out of the can and slice them. There's no carving problem, because there's no bone, no waste. That makes canned meats economical, too. Mmm, -hmm. Mary, this salad of yours is a special favorite of mine. It's a favorite with our guests, too. A tart and tangy vegetable salad made with marinated beets, green beans, young asparagus tips, and garnished with colorful strips of canned pimento. And it's a cinch to prepare, too. And what do we have for dessert? A real treat. Chocolate nut roll with whipped cream. You know, it looks homemade, and it tastes homemade, too. When you serve this, you can expect your guest to ask for a second helping. Well, that's how I did it. With canned foods on your shelf, you're always ready for anything. And canned foods are the easiest of all to store. And they're so fresh tasting and delicious. Well, no wonder. All the flavor of the food is sealed in right at the peak of freshness. All the juices and vitamins, too. What's more, canned foods help to keep down your food budget all year long. It's low in cost, and it's all food. There's no waste. Everything considered, 
A tin can, which is really 99% steel, is the ideal container for food. Well, of course. After all, only steel can do so many jobs so well. Next week, the Elgin Hour will star John Ireland, Kim Stanley, and Yarmila Novotnia in The Bridge, written for television by Joseph Shaw. The Bridge is an exciting romantic drama about an embittered French girl and an American engineer who struggle to find love in war-torn France. Don't miss The Elgin Hour, produced by Herbert Brodkin, one week from tonight. And now, a word from Elgin. On the face of this handsome Lord Elgin, and on this lovely Wadsworth, as on every Elgin and Wadsworth watch, you find this symbol. It stands for Durapower, the famous Elgin miracle mainspring guaranteed to never, never break. Now watch this acid test. Here's a vessel filled with a strong corrosive acid. First, we put in a Durapower mainspring, then an ordinary mainspring. Notice the ordinary mainspring. In a few seconds, it's eaten away, completely destroyed. But the unbreakable Durapower mainspring is undamaged. It's amazingly durable. And as a result, it completely eliminates mainspring failure, the greatest source of watch trouble. And because it won't rust or lose its springiness, the Durapower mainspring helps your watch keep accurate time longer. So always look for this symbol. You'll find it on every beautiful Elgin watch. Be sure it's an Elgin, the beautiful way to tell time. <laughs> Two weeks from tonight, the United States Steel Hour will star Celeste Holm and Robert Preston in a stark melodrama of terror, The Bogeyman, produced by the Theater Guild. century, the Young Women's Christian Association has been performing many noteworthy services for girls and young women all over the world. Join us in saluting the YWCA upon this worthwhile organization's centennial anniversary. Remember, only steel can do so many jobs so well. Your guide to quality steel is this trademark, USS. The best possible steel at the lowest possible price. The proud achievement of United States Steel. Pond Theater commences Thursday on ABC Television Network.